did you see the the wreckage and all the stuff that was in the harbor? I sure did, and it'd make you cry almost. Could you tell us about what you saw? <laughs> all them battleships were laying over on the side, and just tore up. It was like species. You haven't been in one of them ships after a battle. You ought to see it. I didn't like the cleanup, you know, that a lot of guys got killed. I went in service in 1943, end of the, near the end of the year. I learned a lot in there. Uh, I learned a lot. I matured a lot, uh, which gave me a different direction in life to what I would have probably had if I didn't go there. You learn to respect everything in the military, and that's something that, you know, you can't smack respect into somebody, but you can teach them respect. Uh, you can't make somebody like you, but you can, you can show them how to respect you, and that's, that's something I got out of the military, and that's something I, I look back on now and appreciate. Well, if I had to go again, I'd go again today. Uh, I think the reason that we have the opportunity to do what we do is because of a strong military. I, I enjoyed my service. I enjoyed working with the men I work with. I would like to see some of them, but I, uh, there's no way I'd ever see them because they, you know, stretch out across the United States. You appreciate it home. You appreciate it home in the States.
So I was assigned a staff of two Vietnamese boys. And they helped me. Uh, uh, we drew charts, briefing charts, uh, made many signs. Uh, I enjoy working with those two boys. I always wonder what happened to them. Uh, and I always thought maybe I would go back to Vietnam just to see if I could find those two boys. What we call a bomb shelter uh, built there. And incidentally, four of us, which was a member of the church, got together down there, and we had worship service every Sunday. I realize how truly blessed that I have been by God's amazing grace in giving me uh, the opportunity to serve my country uh, by giving me a, a supportive and long-suffering wife that uh, helped me through uh, some of these difficult times. And I think it's important that we really remember those who are serving our country now in our prayers. They are more powerful than anyone can really believe. And I had a five months old son when I left here. So see, he was a little over a year old when I got back. I missed him, missed being away from him and everything. General Eisenhower made a presentation and he made the statement, when your country needs you, you go. And if you get a toothbrush, a talent of our soap, that's all they need to give you. you and whatever you have to do, you do it. You had to carry channel pairs from different sites. We had seven sites all around the northern and middle part of Vietnam. We'd go in on a C-130 and that slowing down that gate would start lowering. As soon as it slowed down where you could just hit the ground, into the terminal, unlock the box, put yours in, take theirs out, run, catch the plane. When he turned, he never stopped. So I spent the night several places more than once because I didn't get back to the plane. I didn't like the combat. We took over working. Yeah. Yeah, we had to. And what is scary, though, was the, the submarines. You pick one of them up, and then they knew about it. They'd, they'd go down on the bottom, cut their engines off, and you couldn't find them. Only thing I got was my shots when I went, went in. I got my shots, and the called troop ship went to Pearl Harbor. And they said, we need so many ship, so many guys for this ship, and so many guys for that ship. And I told the guy I went across with, I said, next ship they call out, let's grab it. He said, okay, so they called the Vestal out, and that's how it come me to be on the Vestal. We got there, we was playing ball that day out on the field, and I looked up, and there comes a fighter plane in just to burn him, smoke him. The land is about 300 yards from us. He'd been shot up. And uh, so <laughs> I didn't think much about it, you know. I really hadn't thought much about the war until then, because I wasn't near it. I wasn't anywhere near getting shot or anything. So, that night we went in the barracks and oh, about two o'clock in the morning where the sirens are blowing and everything and I said, what in the world is going on? And they said, we're getting bombed. I said, oh me, and I took off across those cots and I think I put holes in about four of those cots getting out of that place. <laughs> Is
enjoy my service. And, and, uh, I think it's a good duty. I learn a lot about myself and about the United States. And uh, of course, when I become 19, 18, 19, and they called me. And at that time, all the available men left on that ship. So I was transferred then to the rocket ship, LSMR. And uh, of course, then we sailed. And when I went aboard, I was all eyes. They said, well, you, 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 and you, and you're going to be a cook. I said, I can't boil water. He said, well, we got some books down there. And of course, I had the friends that I met. And uh, some of them I even went back. Uh, one in uh, Iowa, Clinton, Iowa, I used to visit him. He'd come down. You get close. You get close. Is that your daddy? Daddy! <laughs> yeah! Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> daddy! Hi, daddy! <laughs> 